How could Whoa. that happen to me? Now that these buddies mm, are officially wieners, it's time for glorious dinner. Come here, Pooch. Here we go. Dinner time. You ready? Here you go. They finally got what they deserved for doing a damn month of Welcome to Moose Park. Well, time to go do something else. Woo! Buddy Shots 119. We are the we're third week into Gene Hackman month. Hump week. Or, yes, hump week. Yeah, exactly. Um, I guess happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Um, when this premieres, Mother's Day would have already happened, but, you know, happy Mama's Day. <laughs> Hopefully you're having a good day with your mother. We're over the hump with the Mean Gene bump. That's true. Um, before we go any further, though, yeah, as usual, I want to thank everybody for watching, and uh, if you guys like what we do, make sure to subscribe and uh, leave us a comment or like or become a buddy today, and we will uh, definitely help us out. Um once again, I put out a poll asking, this time if you'd seen Prime Cut, and like 100% of the people said no. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'd never even heard of this film until you like... Yeah, I'd never heard of it before until a few years ago. Um, I heard someone talking about it. I was like, whoa, Gene Hackman? Gotta check it out. Yeah, you know, for sure. Like, exploitation, weird action movie, kind of? Yeah. yeah. It's really weird. It's like... It's weird. You know, <laughs> um, and then I put out a poll since, you know, we're third week into four five weeks of this moose port thing i can't ask the same thing have you seen welcome to moose port so this week i first asked, question have you seen moose yeah port? second <laughs> question <laughs> have you seen <laughs> moose port <laughs> have you ever stopped watching a movie 100 percent of the people said yes yeah i wonder if uh this was their 100 percent moose port um yeah i'm always conflicted about that but like at some point i realized there's just not enough there's, there's not enough time like right, I mean, if, if, if you wanted you know to you're watch not every enjoy single it. movie or play every video game, there, you wouldn't be able to do it at this yeah. point if you were going to try to go through everything. So you got to like use your time how you see fit. Yep. Get your money when you need it. Yep. It's called J.G. Wentworth. <laughs> I won't judge anyone for leaving a movie or bailing. Yeah, leaving. <laughs> People start leaving the movie, they're in it. <laughs> they're like, <"Fuck laughs> they leave you. their own house. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm the same way. Like, I... I, I don't do it very often, but, like, if something just gets to a point where, like, I mean, with Halloween, we were both, like, I mean, you, you got to it before I did, and you were just, like... Let's clarify, Halloween ends. Yes. <laughs> ballistic. Um, yeah. So, uh, welcome to Mooseport. Three of it's five. time for the Mooseport Minute. So, do you love it now? <laughs> so it sucks dude 44 minutes to an hour and 6 minutes if you're watching along if you're out of control enough to do this fucking by week which honestly I would have just rather taken the shot in the fucking head and done it all at once but uh, fuck this movie and Ray Romano's fake drunk dog shit he's bad in this <clears throat> I think I hate Ray Romano <laughs> fuck his movies He wrote this. this is just bad like yeah, like they have a fake drunk scene, and you know how I feel about that. <laughs> yeah, that was... at the best of times, this mm -hmm. is like bottom of the barrel. Yeah, this is like somebody that's never been drunk or has been high, pretending that they're drunk, and it's like it's like someone in middle school, like, oh, I'm totally wasted. And it's like I had like eighteen <laughs> yeah. beers, man. She had done the weed. <laughs> um, I will say, I got my first laugh in the segment. I laughed for the first time. Which, I, it might be the same part that I kind of... It was during the debate yeah. where, uh, like, Gene Hackman comes has, like, this great answer. Yeah. And Ray Romano's rebuttal is like, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, I agree. Yeah, that was the only part. <laughs> that was, like, I wish that would happen in a real debate. Like, that was refreshing to hear. But I did put, I don't want to watch this debate bullshit. I didn't either. Um, this is the only underdog film I've ever watched that makes you root for the guy with the fucking advantage. The like, overdog. It's, it's an accomplishment, I guess you got you can say because it's the only film I think in the entire history of fucking motion pictures that makes you fruit for the fucking overdog. Mm -hmm. 
It's like, oh man, I want to see fucking Apollo Creed destroy Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? But weren't you riveted during the rock, paper, scissors scene? I was like, whoa. They play rock, paper, fuck you to me personally. Uh, I hate this more than any film we've watched on the podcast. <laughs> That's pushing it. I mean... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you thought about it, you that's were a, like, That's a right, bold fuck. statement, but you might be right now that I think about it. Because <laughs> at least other films, like, had something going for them, like, even a little bit. This is like... If you, like, turned fucking drywall into a movie, it's like... So, it's like looking at a dead body just laying there. Yeah, it's like a <laughs> robot, <laughs> fucking no emotion bullshit. Um, Secret Service suggests to kill Ray Romano, which I was like, oh my god, they would have been my heroes yeah, if that would have like, happened. Please do it. That was another part where I was like, what the fuck? And Gene Hackman was like, you guys are fucking sick. And I was like, why isn't this just like about Gene Hackman being the president? We didn't need this other part of it. Like, because he's. Even in this shitty movie, he's like a thousand leagues above everything else. Mm -hmm. Yep, I agree. Um, I think there was kind of a a weird scene where like Gene Hackman has a daydream like in High Fidelity about killing his ex and Ray Store, which I thought was kind of weird and a little bit funny, but yeah. I thought it was so out of place for this movie because this totally. movie up until this point has been nothing and yeah. then this happens and I was like holy shit what is this it'd be like if you're watching an episode of Friends and then I don't know where someone like, like cuts someone's throat yeah or it like changes to like an action film I'd yeah. be like what uh, Gene Hackman says the most appropriate thing I've ever heard to describe not only this his lot in life but uh, how far we've sunk in 119 episodes of the Buddy Shots podcast when he says I used to have dignity once does anybody remember that yep Put it on the poster. Uh, that was my last thing for this week. Um, so what do you think is going to happen next? We'll get to the actual election. So, I mean, like, we could make, I guess, predictions here. If I was going to predict, I'd, I mean, it's so formulaic. It's mm -hmm. like everything I've ever said so far fucking happened. Dude, like, here's here. I know what's going to happen. Yeah. They're going to have the election. It's going to come down to one vote. The girlfriend. Yeah. And who will she choose? Yeah. Exactly. Mm. And then, mm. uh, what's her face is gonna like Gene Hackman's gonna find out that his like helper lady secretary like has loved him all the time, and then he'll like wind up with her. It's so yeah, fucking yeah, good obvious. Call. It's like, yep. Um, it's kind of it's it sucks doing this, but at the same time, it's almost kind of like weird because we've never done anything where we like had the opportunity to do this. It just sucks why would it, you? It, why would anyone? It sucks that, like, Welcome to Mooseport was the thing that we dissected this much. This, this will be the film we dissect the most on this podcast. <laughs> uh, I think Super Mario Brothers is going to be hard to top. You, you did a deep dive I, I, on that I, Yeah, I did a ton of work on that. But over it was <laughs> only over one week. You had 60 pages of notes. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I mean, I don't mess around when it comes to the SMB. <laughs> um, so... Uh, yeah, I don't have anything else to say about this. I mean, I think oh, that I didn't have much more to say about this after the first week, but, no. you know, we're just updating people. Um, we're saving you the trouble of fucking watching this film if you're still with us at this point. Um, if so, we thank you. If not, we understand. Um, but let's get on to the meat for this week. Whoa! Prime Cut. Uh, so this came out in 1972, so this was like, just a year or so or maybe yeah i think this in, is the movie he made right after uh, uh winning the oscar French for connection. french connection so an odd choice yeah so this is an american action crime film um produced by joe was on directed by michael ritchie from a screenplay written by robert dylan and starring lee marvin who portrays a mob enforcer from the chicago irish mob sent to kansas to collect a debt from a meatpacker boss played by gene hackman the pitcher coasts are Sissy Spacek and her first credited on-screen role as a young orphan being sold into prostitution, as well as Angel Tompkins and Eddie Egan. Um, yeah. Yeah, so this movie won the Oscar for Best Picture, and Gene Hackman was nominated for... Oh, wait, no. <laughs> that I was, was going to say, that was last what? <laughs> what do you think of Prime Cut? Um... I don't know, honestly. That's weird, man. Yeah. Like, uh, 
I thought that like some parts of it were not were were pretty good, mm-hmm. and then some parts of it were like just kind of I don't want to say generic, but just like nothing. Yeah, it's like there's not this is pretty not a whole lot happens in this fairly low stakes. Like uh, like Lee mm-hmm. Marvin is in my opinion like the best part about this like bar yeah. none. He's like he's this like cool mob enforcer like <laughs> dude and um he's like their collection man and it's like he's basically I, like the ultimate bad i would have just loved to see a bunch of films about this character yeah i agree nick devlin yeah uh lee marvin's awesome um he always reminded me of my grandpa who was also named Lee and he had like that heavy smokers voice, you yeah. know? <laughs> and also he's the only other person I've seen besides Lee Marvin to wear like those white loafers, you know, <laughs> my grandpa used to wear those. There's a character in Yakuza, those games I play or whatever, uh, Kiryu. He's like, uh, the same kind of do- deal where he was like, a he worked for the Yakuza and like, um, collected money and stuff. And he had like pretty much the same s- suit down oh, nice. to his So I almost wonder if like, Somebody saw this movie and saw this guy's get up and like, because he's got like the same shoes and it's like, you know, he's like a badass and everything. So it's like, I wonder if like, you know, they kind of, somebody saw this and was like, holy shit, we got to put this kind of character in, or at least his outfit and stuff. But speaking of Lee though, do you think that this guy's like made it big with his special recipe or his famous recipe of chicken? (laughs) I was wondering where you were going with that. (laughs) I don't think Lee's, it's dude, famous. Dude, Lee's, Lee's famous. famous recipe exists anymore. Because, like, the last time I had it, like, there was one in West, Westchester or Pisgah, and I ate there and got fucking violently ill. <laughs> and they're not there anymore, so. I think the last time I had it was we went there when I lived in Louisville. And we oh. were eating there, and I looked over, and there was a bullet hole in the window. <laughs> it was the colonel. <laughs> Fuck you, it's my turf. Lee's, that was the good stuff, man, back in the day. Yeah, uh, at least... Maybe that wasn't the last time I ate. I think the last time it was when I went up to like. <laughs> but that's year. been like decades ago. <clears throat> yeah, this is back when like Romero was like my only source for like uh, like income or <laughs> not income uh, entertainment for like zombie movies. Mm, mm-hmm. So like you know it was like holy shit. <laughs> I'm like he was my only source for income. Did you know that Lee Marvin and Gene Hackman were both in the Marines? Oh, nice. And Lee Marvin actually fought in World War II and like got Jesus machine gunned, so he's a real life war hero. I mean, by like in this movie, he's up there. So I assume by the time we watch this, he was like a fucking fifty year skeleton or something. Yeah, I mean, he I think he died of like pretty pretty young, yeah. relatively. Um, he had but, like the Leslie Nielsen thing going on where his hair was like. <laughs> pretty much gray when he's born i'm assuming but he's great in this yeah um i really enjoyed him um what do you think of gene hackman as mary ann i think he's always good he's a little bit more like this is probably the only role i've really seen him in where he's like kind of a chicken shit to a degree like you you actually see like fear in his face where most films he's in he's like at least that i've seen where he's like the other mm-hmm. opposing person, even if he's a good guy or a bad guy, he's usually like super confident in this. He was like, when things finally came down, he was like, holy shit. Like, <laughs> which was interesting. It was definitely like a change of pace. Mm-hmm. He wasn't in it as much as I remembered. Um, I yeah. guess he just makes an impact yeah, in the scenes like that he's juice. in. Um, so. The freaking intro to this will, like, turn you into a vegetarian. I was just, like... I almost fast-forwarded past it, but I didn't. But I was just, like, man, if they show... If they actually show something here, I'm fucking skipping this shit. Yeah, they spared you actually seeing a cow get executed, but it comes close. It was pretty fucking horrible. Um, So... They have, like, a special order, and, like, they're writing on it what it is, like, or, like marker squeaking sounds were like fucking nails on a chalkboard i was like Dude, this is fucking <laughs> hell but you're seeing like all these cows and all this meat but yeah. then at one point you see a booty butt and you're like wait a minute <laughs> like i'd rather just have normal sex <laughs> um yeah i was like well at first i was like what's going on here i was like is this some kind of psychedelic movie where like the cows are like 
actually women or like they're pretending like people see them as women or something but there's like a scene later where like they're actually selling like drugged up women in a barn where you would like be selling cows yeah you think it's like a livestock right. auction but then you realize there's people yeah. in there there's people in there <laughs> so like uh it's not like a artsy kind of deal it's like there's no. they're actually selling people this there's nothing very artsy about this movie. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Like <laughs> seven minutes and twenty five seconds. Finally out of that hellhole scene. <laughs> yeah, dudes in red truck play all night. Huh? I don't know what that <laughs> what? means. <laughs> dudes in red truck play all night. <laughs> I need to like when I write down notes when I'm watching the film. I need to write what I'm talking about instead of just like I'm trying to think what that even means. <laughs> They're like. Woo. Um, Marianne Jean Hackman is not paying his cut, so they like are like we need to send up somebody to collect here because they've sent up people and they don't come back. Well, they come back as hot dogs. <laughs> well, the not all. This is the first time they came back as hot mm. dogs because they weren't sure where they were, and then fucking they came back and they were like, "Yeah, we got this from him," and it was essentially like a "Don't fuck with me" kind of thing. Um. So they have like a whistling score that's like something that I was more associate with a western, which I thought was pretty cool. Mm. Um, Lee Marvin says, "Jesus, what a bare ass town." <laughs> I was like, "Okay." Well, did you notice the dude that like sends him on his mission mm-hmm. was Eddie Egan, the real life Popeye Doyle from the French Connection? <laughs> He's like, "It's me. <laughs> I'm a real life Popeye." He, he, was, goes, mm. he was like their boss on French Connection. Remember? He's like, "Blow me down." <laughs> um goes in a car hotel it's like a hostel everyone's like in one fucking room i was like jesus it was like beds in a hot ba- <clears throat> hot bath 30 cents beds only 25 cents hot bath 20 cents lean just to lean on the fucking wall 10 cents sit and lean 15 cents it's like man you could stay there for fucking ever nice flop house. flop house and then second floor was like a private rooms I was like, and then this is where he confronts the fucking. That's where Weenie lives. <laughs> Weenie, too bad, Weenie. That's your hot dog hand. What do you think of the character of Weenie? <laughs> I think the name says it all. Yeah. It's not really much to say about this guy. He's a freak. He's like a brute. Yeah. Um. He's like one of the headbangers or something. Dude pulls briefcase out from under seat, takes a gun, and like offers it to like Nick, and he's like, nope. So, like, it kind of sets up early that, like, he's not really, you know, he's, like, he handles stuff. Doesn't want to get his hands way. dirty. And then, like, Unless later he has on to. when things, yeah, really go down, it's like, okay, this guy's not fucking around. It's kind of like pre-John Wick. Where mm-hmm. it's just, like, yeah, we talked about this, the barn, act- uh, the barn action. Barn auction with nude women in stalls where they're, like, they're, like, first you're, like, wondering, like, what, you know, like, okay, well, these women are just, like, you know, being pro- they're prostituting themselves, but it's like, oh, they're all fucking drugs, so they're essentially they're being slaves. like Shanghai. Yeah. Um, and Gene Hackman is eating. Na na. You had that. Na 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 na. Dude. Na 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 Guts. You had that exact same thing. Did you see my note? Or no, no. Oh I... my god. I put Gene Hackman is eating like dog food. It's guts. <laughs> so gross. I kind of wanted a bite of those guts, just to taste. Dude, you're always down for nasty shit to eat. <laughs> But he's going to town on those guts, man. I was like, good lord. <laughs> Stops him from eating Gene. He gets pissed. Um, Gene playing another mean racist character. Uh, Doped up girl says, help me, please. And that's like, that's when he's like, is essentially like, okay, well, you're coming with, we're taking this one for free. Like, sissy SpaceX or whatever gets saved from <clears throat> being essentially like gang raped. Sissy Spacek. (laughs) (laughs) More crazy stuff. Maybe they were singing that with Sissy Spacek. (laughs) Me, Gene's like, (laughs) he's like, get in the car, girl. I'm like, Jesus. (laughs) He's like, under the (laughs) bar. Hey, Bruno, what you doing here? I got my girl in here. Just. (laughs) Fucking dialogue really necessary during the beginning of the song. 
I also love the overlaying of the audio track when like they're starting that one song and he's like playing and then he's like, <laughs> and it's like, there's no fucking way that he could be playing the song and then instantly be like, because <laughs> it sounds like he's like 50 years away from the microphone. <laughs> so good. It's like Michael Jackson layering his audio, but that was used for the good of mankind. <laughs> Carrie herself. Yeah. Is carried by <laughs> Lee. Yeah. True. Both in this film and out to the car. <laughs> um, you think you're big men? Let's both take down our pants and see who's the bigger man. Why don't we just ask Clarabelle? Uh. How's his thumb if it still hurts? Why don't you stick it in your mouth and suck? It's like nice. Lee Marvin out here with the one-liners. Yeah. <laughs> I like that stuff. Yeah, Lee Marvin fucking rules. Dude throws a pitchfork at the car. Uh... Nick buys the uh, poppy. I don't know why I put Nick buys this poppy woman a bunch of gifted clothing. <laughs> she's a poppy woman. He's a poppy woman. So she wakes up and she's like completely naked and he like buys her a bunch of like stuff because I would say he bought her a bunch of stuff because she was naked, but like he bought her like this sheer see through green dress and they like go to dinner and like she's completely naked. What do you think that was all about? Uh, I really don't know to tell you the truth. I think it was Lee Marvin was just like, I think she looks good and I'm cool enough that like no one's going to mess with me right. or her. And she goes along with it. I don't think it had any deeper meaning really. But... <laughs> that was weird though. <laughs> yeah. Dude with his old wife keeps looking at her. Nude breasts. <laughs> Lee is like, what are you looking at? I was just like, good lord, dude. This is, yeah. I mean, they're in a really nice restaurant, but like none of the people that like wait on them give a shit. It's like the people around them. Um, and it's really only a couple people were looking. Everyone else just goes back to their shit because mm-hmm. it's like, but like, yeah, it's just, it's it's definitely interesting. Then we got some bro bros wrestling here. Yeah, some uh, playing playing a game of grab ass. Yeah, <clears throat> I read somewhere that like people are saying that there's some possible like implied incest in this between or like some weird relationship between the. There's two something, brothers. yeah. So, yeah like, there's Gene something Hacken weird going on. Queenie or whatever. Because at one point I thought, like, is Gene going to kill his brother? Like, <laughs> they get, like, rough. Well, yeah, any time that, like, it's, it's like, rough, but then, like, they, like, become very, like, overly affectionate towards each other. Yeah. And, like, at the end of the movie, like, there's parts where, like, they get hurt and they're, like, flipping out because the other person got hurt. It's like, Jesus. Not that it's, you know, a big deal if, like, your brother gets hurt and you're flipping out, but it's, like, combined with all the other stuff, it's kind of like... yeah. Uh, he rubs ice on him while they're fighting. That's an interesting tactic. Um, Weenie uh, likes wearing women's clothing. I guess that's kind of like there was an implied thing here where he's like, it won't fit you. And then like he was getting it for this other girl, but it kind of seems like this isn't the first time he's like possibly, you know, gotten some of like Clarabelle's clothes and <laughs> used it for another woman or like worn it himself. Mm-hmm. Um, so... This orphanage groomed kids to be, like, sex slaves in this movie. Like, for the first... Like, in this movie, it's it, at first, it's kind of like, okay, it's just kind of like a mob movie. But then it's, like, has huge, disgusting implications with, like, gang rape and women... Like, really young women being, like, groomed to be, like, sex slaves and mm-hmm. all this horrible other shit. And it's just like, good lord. <laughs> it is dark. Yeah. Uh, gives Violet a dress. I'll take you to the fair. Yeah, I will. And then it's just like, okay. And the next time you see her, she's like, been like ganged by like fifty dudes. It's like cool. Is that the scene where uh, she's like the each guy pays a nickel, and then she reveals like <laughs> yeah. a whole fistful of nickels, and you're like, Jesus. Yeah, that was. Uh... I think the the best thing I can say about this film is that they spared actually showing any of that. Yeah. Uh, random lady gets thrown into pail. Um, cow washing zoom in. Super weird green snot looking pie. Like they cut into this pie for the pie eating contest or something, and it's like, like nuclear green. <laughs> it's like, it's like ecto cooler. I don't know what the fuck this is. Uh, I wanted to ask, have you ever been to like a county fair like that or a state fair? Yeah, it's it's been a long time, and yeah, I don't know. It's like really the only thing that you ever do with stuff like that is just like eat the fried shit that's gross (laughs) or not gross it's like not good for you but 
I can't really ever think of that there's anything at a county fair that's worth going to that isn't just like the food. Like usually, you know, yeah. I usually there's not like a fucking act there. It's not like somebody's there that's like you know, oh, here's the black eyed peas or something. <laughs> Uh, I don't know why that was the first thing I thought of, but it's like I saw Herman's there. Hermits at the State Fair. <laughs> that was an act. It's something. <laughs> um, what are they known for? Herman's Hermits. It's like I'm Henry the Eighth. I am Henry the Eighth. I am. I am. Hmm. <laughs> they were from like the '60s. Okay. Like the swinging '60s, baby. <laughs> yeah. They're like if the monkeys were like not popular. Yeah. They're like up on stage, like the whole time, and you're like, "These guys are fucking awesome. <laughs> groovy." Oh man, they're like, "This is a fucking swinging fair, baby," and it freaks me out. <laughs> uh, after the French Connection, once again, another film where Gene Hackman is asking kids for approval. Do you want to shake my hand? He says. I went, "What the fuck is with this guy?" Next week, he's gonna be fucking like, he'll he's just like, be hanging out with kids. Get your ass away from me. <laughs> He's like, last week he's like, Superman, get your ass down from down. <laughs> Lee slaps Gene. That was good. Yeah. You just bought the farm. No, you did. I was just like, no, great comeback. Yeah, good job there. He's like, no, uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah. Oh. Uh, so, what do you think about like this? These ladies had like a milk dispenser that won first prize, but like, it was like. A replica of a cow that they, like, filled with milk. Like, what did you... Th- I thought that was kind of, like, a weird dispenser. I thought it was disgusting. And then, like, some they shot it and fucking it, like, is broke. And she's like, that ain't fair. <laughs> and I'm like, I have a feeling a lot of these people that were in this movie that were are, were not actors. They were, like, just people in the yeah. fair. Because the way that they delivered their lines was, like... But we had to have the scene where Lee Marvin tastes the milk. And I'm like, can't we delete this? Like, <laughs> why is this in the movie? Like a mole. It's like a fucking, yeah. <laughs> They're running from the shotgun brothers. Uh, shots ring out for turkey shoot. Then kid gets shot by henchmen. Uh, he gets like blown away. Like one of his fellow dudes or whatever. I was like, good lord. Uh, so this is like the big like center, like big action scene in the movie. Yeah. Like the chase with the wheat thresher or whatever. Yeah. Which I think is kind of lackluster to be honest. Uh, yeah, it's I very, think like, it's the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> no, but, uh... So, I mean, we went from French Connection chase to this, and it's like, it pales in comparison. So, like, a bunch of guys follow them into the woods, um, and then there's, like, kind of tense because they're hiding in, like, a field of wheat, and they're, like, looking around, they leave, and they're in the middle of nowhere, and then, um, she's like, they're trying to kill you, and he's like, that's nothing new. And then this is when they start running from, like, a hay baler thresher. Mm-hmm. And it starts off kind of tense, then gets ridiculous, and it loses all meaning because it, like, goes on forever. And, like, you can't tell me that, like, for minutes it couldn't catch them. I know. Like, she even trips, and it still doesn't catch <laughs> up. And I'm like, dude, this is fucking horseshit. They were going for, like, a whole Hitchcock vibe, I think, like, North by Northwest. Yeah. But it's just poorly done. It's not very exciting. Yeah, I I think like it would have been best just to leave this on the cutting room floor if it, if they weren't gonna like or have it be at like edit this correctly yeah, because yeah. I feel like this reminds me of like somebody that like just wants to use every bit of footage that they caught because fucking literally it was like okay let's show this and let's show a bunch of different angles and it was like okay this is extending this scene so fucking long and like. <laughs> Yeah, it was just incompetent uh, chase. Roger Ebert pointed out, like, because Lee Marvin and Sissy Spacek are point are holding hands the whole chase. Yes. He's like, they probably could have run faster if they stopped holding hands. It wouldn't have mattered. I know. Because the fucking, apparently the thresher moves, like, <laughs> how fast would it was, was it going? It was like, it couldn't have even been going, like, a mile per hour. <laughs> it was, like, somehow going slower. It was like that chase in Obi Wan Kenobi where Flea has to like, yeah, take a hop step. It's worse jump. than that. It was like fucking Austin Powers. It was like <laughs> a fucking joke. When I saw that, that was the first thing I thought of was in Austin Powers where they have the steamroller <laughs> scene where like it's done for comedy and this is supposed to be like tense. And I'm like, let's have a chase with the slowest moving vehicle yeah. ever. And then it's like, okay, let's. But I did have a question. This. 
Could a weed thresher like eat a car? Yeah, I thought that was kind of like <laughs> that was like I'm not really sure about Mad that. Magazine. I thought if anything, it would have like stopped and kind of like <laughs> it would have broke. Also, like like uh, they ram it with the car and they everybody jumps out of the car except the driver, and then he fucking jumps out afterwards. So I was like, why do those guys jump out if fucking <laughs> they didn't need to? And then he gets out, he shoots the fucking dude and kills him. But then, like, the Thresher's eating up the car, and they're all just standing there for, like, a minute watching this. And it's like, nobody could have went up there and turned the fucking machine off. <laughs> like, the whole car gets fucking, like, turned into fucking, like... S- scrap metal. Yeah, like, shoots out the back. And I'm like, there's no way that it would have <laughs> I think ate it up and shit it out the back in parts. I think that was supposed to be, like... A comedy yes. classic, like they thought the theater would be like laughing their ass off at this car getting eaten. People were too busy, uh, fucking swinging on the door. <laughs> fucking, I think the Mythbusters need to do an episode where, yeah, get the Mythbusters on this one. Sure, then they can wonder, they can find out who edited this film and fucking <laughs> hit him with a fucking sack of potatoes. Uh, <clears throat> Nick goes to see Claire Bell on her yacht where she lives. That houseboat was awesome. Yeah. I wouldn't mind being a widow. She's just with Marianne for the money. She loves Nick. It's pretty apparent she's pissed when she doesn't get her way because he's just, like, kind of playing her. And then he's just like, you know, I'm not falling for your shit. And he's just like, kiss my ass. And then he, like, leaves. And she's like, he's like, have fun going down to Mississippi or the Missouri. He's like, Missouri River. <laughs> Turns into fucking, <laughs> what's his face? <laughs> Uh, what are you doing? Kicking your ass down the Missouri? Yeah, she was pissed, dude. I was just like, that's what you get. Actually, I don't even really know what she did. I <laughs> yeah, I said that's what you get for fucking being in this movie, you <laughs> idiot. You're not. If you're not with me, you're against me. <laughs> I'm gonna kick your home into the ocean. Fucking from my point of view, <laughs> sissy space <Spacek> is evil. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Marvin's holding me back. <laughs> what? <laughs> Anakin. Skywalker. So three dudes left. It's showtime. So these dudes like... Uh, oh, wait, no. Hold on, wait. Yeah, we just talked about the rape scene. Um, Nicola P's disgusting. <clears throat> the, so the final shootout, um, I think it starts out pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Especially like Lee Marvin, he tapes two clips together. Yeah, because they're in the car getting ready to go. Yeah, like the gear like up scene. Music ramps up, storm and lightning, and then... They're driving to like, like, the place or whatever for the he, final. He showdown. finally gets a gun, and that's when it's like, okay, this shit's on. It's mm-hmm. like John Wick style, or you know, any action movie where it's like the dude has had enough. It's on, and it's like that's cool. Okay, here we go. But I'm assuming you're probably about to. Well, it also started out cool because basically none of the guys have cover. They're just using yes. the wheat. Like it's a shootout in a field of wheat. They're which like is cool. blocking it with. Stop but then after that, like, once they get into the barn and stuff, it just goes on a, bit, a little bit too long, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, I think this probably, like, anything in this movie that, that kind of I have complaints about could have been done better with, like, tighter editing. But even still, this movie's really short. It's, like, under 90 minutes. Yeah. So, <laughs> there's but not, not much... like, I did, not editing out, like, it's usually the action is, like, the stuff that needs to be yeah. kind of made a little In the milk tasting tighter. scene. Yeah. Extended cut. Bunch of New Hope Luke Skywalkers popping out of the fucking sunflowers. They all got like the fucking Mark Hamill haircut here. I was like, okay. Uh, They're Luke Skywalkers. They're They're freaks. They're like... (laughs) So old man driver gets blasted and then another dude gets fucking flank shot. But then like, they're both fine. They like crawl over and they're like, we're still alive. And then he's like, okay, I'm going in. I'll come back for you guys. Uh, Music is jaunty. I was just like, good day for a massacre. Yeah. Uh, so he, I, I thought this was the fucking funniest part of the entire movie. Uh, and I don't know if it was supposed to be funny, but he like hijacks this trucker and he's like, fucking drive if you don't want to die. And then he like takes over and he crashes into the greenhouse and he looks over and he, the driver is like dead. <laughs> and I was like, this fucking guy got fucking killed for no reason. Like this was just like a random non-associated dude that just got killed by the fucking hero hero <laughs> i thought that was so awesome i was cracking up man 
This movie, it does deliver on the violence. Like, there's, yeah. there's some good violence in this, a good body count. He also kills a guy from, like, a year away with an SMG. Yeah. Like, a dude's on top of, like, a fucking tower, like, 50 <laughs> yeah. miles away, and he's like... <laughs> like, spray like, and pray. The guy just falls. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay. It's like, awesome power style, where he's, like, <laughs> shoots, and, like, ten dudes fall. Yeah. Uh, so we got Hackman and Bro in the rafters. Um, I was actually kind of shocked about this, because he actually, like dispenses gene hackman first uh and this was kind of you're like that's against the rules this was kind of weird because he actually like hits a pig on the way down i'm like i'm pretty sure that like when he fell that probably wasn't he didn't mean for that to happen but it's also one of those things where you know that pig actually got fucking hit because there was there was no like people saying like don't do that to animals Mm -hmm. back in the day and um it, it didn't look like it got, like, killed or anything because it kind of, like, moved and stuff. But it was, like, he, like, landed on it. And I was just like, Jesus. <laughs> but it looked like a rough bump. Um, <laughs> but he destroys the fuck out of the other brother. And, like, Gene begs him to be... Begs to be finished off in this film. And he's, like, dying on his back, like, unforgiven. <laughs> then he's, he's like, like, I was building a house. He was, like, dying on account of a cowardly soul. <laughs> <laughs> but he, like lives essentially i think he's gonna wish he was dead because fucking the mob's gonna get his ass and fucking tear him up mm-hmm. uh so this old bitch that hoard out all the girls for sex gets knocked out oh so that was my dk favorite part. style and uh the girl they got the perfect person to play that woman too because she had like a lazy eye almost and like she she was like this old crone that she looked had, mean yeah and she like looked like she had it coming like yeah, I was then like, then I need then to give that lady an Oscar for just existing. For taking that punch like yeah. a champ. <laughs> she gets, the worst, like, the worst back, like, punch I've ever seen. <laughs> Indiana Jones. Sissy SpaceX, like, yeah, she's like, I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? When you sent me that, I was cracking up because I was waiting for you to watch it. <laughs> but I was like, oh my god. That was a great cap. Yeah, that was like capper. fucking, uh, yeah. What were you say, like an Indiana Jones when fucking... Well, like, I was going to say, yeah. she, like... She, she took that punch like Indiana Jones delivered it, but it was Sissy Spacek. I thought you were talking about when Marianne gives a punch like that in Indiana Jones, and yeah. it's like, eh. <laughs> it's like, you know women can punch normally. They don't have to fucking be like... <laughs> here like, it comes. Like, here yeah. comes the birdie. Like, Boom. DK. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. Boom. <laughs> what? That's um, where you do one of these. You're like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, what? Works in real life. I'm like... <laughs> yeah. Boink. Um, but like the girls are saved and they're going to be taken to Chicago and it's like, it's a nice scene, but it's like you look and you see, holy shit. Like there were like girls in there that were like, they're like babies. It's like, Jesus. (laughs) It's fucking horrifying. The implications are horrifying. It's true. Um, so this movie feels like very much like a Western. Um, yeah, I didn't really think about that, but now that you you mentioned that, I can see it for sure. Um, because the guy comes in and rolls. He in literally goes stuff. west yeah. to <laughs> take on his mission, and he even turns into a badass. So I think Nick is my favorite character out of all the characters in the Gene Hackman films we watched so far. Whoa, nice. Which sucks because I well, no, nah, it doesn't suck, but like I would have loved to have seen a bunch of movies with this character, mm-hmm. um, because he's kind of like a. A guy that you could see them doing a thing where, like, eventually he stops working for the mob and, like, becomes, like, you know, a guy that's standing up for his own. Because he has, like, a set of, co- like, a morals here, you can tell, and stuff. This is a cool character. Um, not the, I mean, I love Gene Hackman, and he was great in this movie. He mm-hmm. just didn't have as much to do as in some of the other ones where he's, like, the main star. He's on the poster of this, but it's essentially, like, the Lee Marvin show. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. He's great in this. But the good news for you is, like, he plays very similar characters in lots of other movies. So. We'll have to figure just out a, a good one to watch. Um, <laughs> so I give 9.95 to Nick Devlin. Nice. <laughs> but do you have any other notes on this? Nope. I think we covered it. What do you What do you think we should give this? Or what do you give it, I guess? I'm going to go 7.95. Yeah. Like, I think it's worth watching. I think it's uh, one of the best meat-themed action movies. <laughs> <laughs> What about Midnight and it's Meat just, Train? Yeah. <laughs> a movie that really doesn't have anything. To do with, like, well, I guess he works in a meat plant. But, yeah. Um, it's just a weird little movie. Yeah. I give negative 9.95 to the slaughterhouses of the world. Yeah. And in this movie. Um, 
Yeah, I think I'd probably go around the same too, like seven point nine five. Like, uh, Lee Marvin is fucking awesome in this movie, but like, there's just a lot of stuff in this movie that kind of drags it down. Mm-hmm. Not a lot, but a, a couple of things from making it be like. I would definitely not have this on my top list for like movies you should watch if you're watching Gene Hackman stuff. Yeah, but not to say I'm not like man, his performance was shit. It's like even in Welcome to Mooseport, his performance is fine. It's just the movie you're watching is horrible dark shit. Yeah, he's pretty scary. Like it's just it's a bit of a different note in this one. Yeah. Um, even though he's supposed to be like a bad guy, he's kind of subdued in this. It's definitely <laughs> not as like I'm more. I'd be more scared of like Popeye than I would of this guy. Yeah. Popeye was more unhinged. Popeye. No, oh, Popeye, save me, Popeye. <laughs> but also, it's a problem when, like, the action scenes are the worst part of your action movie. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it's almost kind of like this isn't really even an action film. Like, yeah. your action happens to, like, come into this movie, but not by choice, if yeah. that makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean... But I disagree. I think my favorite character I've seen all month is <laughs> Weenie. <laughs> I knew you were going to say something stupid. <laughs> I didn't mean that. I didn't mean stupid. I'm like, like nice. I knew you were going to fuck me over, man. <laughs> no, I knew you were going to say something like jokey like that. Like, uh, I was watching last week's episode and I can't remember what you said. Oh, no, you were like, my favorite was uh, this. And I was just like cracking up. I was like, damn it. I knew you were going to say that. You're like, Jar Jar. <laughs> Well, how did you fucking first start doing that, by the way? Like, I don't know. I'm sure you probably saw it like, like, back in the day. like right. Like, that picture you sent me, it was like 10 years ago, you took this picture, mm-hmm. and I was wearing that mask and doing this. Oh, that's right. But I don't yeah. know why I did that in the first place. You just did it, yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny because like I know our parents were like, you know, in that era of like peace, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. But anyway. Um, uh, <laughs> so what's next week? Next week is The Quick and the Dead, directed by Sam Raimi. Oh, shit, dude. Hey, it wouldn't be a dead movie without Sam Raimi. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, four or five fucking people agree, welcome to Mooseport. I can't wait till this shit's going to be over. We're getting close. Yeah. Um, hell yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let me write that down. Okay, guys. Well, as usual, thanks for watching the episode. And, um, I mean, okay. Well, I just got a text. I guess we need to go check in with this mob boss guy that, uh, you know, has been hounding us for the podcast for all these weeks. I'm sure nothing bad will happen, though. So, yeah, let's do it. Okay. Well, see you next week. I hope nothing happens. Bye. Oh, I'd love to be an Oscar Mayer wiener That is what I truly like to be Cause if I were an Oscar Mayer wiener Everyone would be in love with me Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're doing? Like, yeah. Jar <laughs> Jar style. Yeah, I'm like, huh? <laughs> Did he ever do that in the movie? <laughs> no, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> He comes out at the end, he's like, da 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 Everyone's like, what? Whoa! <laughs> You're like, mm. Now that the buddies are hot dogs, it's dinner time for glory. Come here, baby. Well, now that the buddies are officially... What are they, hot dogs? <laughs> Wieners. Wieners. <laughs> For doing a damn month of welcome to Moose Park. Well, time to go do something else. <laughs> nice. <laughs>